At a remote California airbase, a U-2 reconnaissance aircraft returns from a classified overseas mission. Immediately upon landing, teams of analysts begin pouring over its bounty of sensitive photographic and electronic information. On the other side of the world, in Afghanistan, a specially modified C-130 gunship unleashes its incredible concentration of firepower to take out enemy targets below. At an undisclosed location, an F-117 stealth fighter is being armed and loaded. It will take part in a daring nighttime raid, penetrating enemy air defenses and delivering its lethal payload with pinpoint accuracy. These three diverse aircraft all trace their lineage to this facility in Palmdale, California, where security precautions are so stringent that they can neither be shown nor discussed. This is the home of the Skunk Works, or, as it is properly known, the Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company. Inside these hangars, science fiction becomes reality, and the boundaries of modern technology are routinely shattered. Skunk Works planes can fly faster than bullets, operate on the edge of outer space, defy the laws of gravity, and become invisible to the enemy. Working in tandem with the CIA for the past 50 years, the Skunk Works has turned out a series of legendary spy planes that helped win the Cold War without ever firing a single shot. Utilizing the latest advances in propulsion and stealth technology, Skunk Works fighters guarantee the air superiority of the United States, not only today, but for generations to come. In 1943, America was in the midst of World War II. The campaign of island hopping in the Pacific was beginning to show results. And the skies over Europe were filled with squadrons of heavy bombers. On the home front, America's arsenal of democracy was in full swing. And factories all across the nation were turning out weapons in record numbers. The Lockheed Aircraft Plant in Burbank, California, was one of the busiest facilities in the country, with production lines running around the clock. Kelly Johnson, Lockheed's resident designer, had created many noteworthy airplanes through the years. But his design genius was demonstrated with two very different aircraft. The P-38 Lightning, was a big, powerful fighter that sported an unusual twin tail design and was built for speed. It was the first airplane that to go over 400 miles an hour that anybody had ever bought. And it became a great ground attack airplane because of all of the guns clustered in the nose. At the opposite end of the aircraft spectrum was the Constellation, a mammoth four-engine transport that could carry more than a hundred troops in pressurized comfort at speeds faster than a Japanese Zero. This graceful, triple-tailed airliner would become a mainstay of post-war commercial aviation and remained in international service for nearly two decades. Fresh from these successes, Kelly Johnson was chosen to head up a new unit within the company, dubbed Advanced Development Projects. The stench from a neighboring plastics factory was so vile that the workers began referring to the place as the Skunk Works, after the smelly still in the then popular Little Abner comic strip. We had a guy, his name was Irv Culver. He's the guy that invented Skunk Works. There was only one phone in the engineering department, and whoever was near it answered it. And Irv picked it up one day when it rang and said, Skunk Works, remember the funny paper? 
until they heard him and fired him. As the Allies began to plan the D-Day invasion of France, panic set in over reports of a new propellerless Nazi fighter plane that was streaking across the skies of Europe. The Messerschmitt 262 twin-engine jet aircraft. In response, the Skunk Works team proposed their own twin-engine fighter and confidently pitched their idea to the War Department. They were shocked at the response. Gentlemen, that's an interesting airplane you're talking about. But if you'll shut up about it, we'll tell you a secret. We have a twin-engine jet fighter. It's flying. And it's no damn good. Now, I have the specifications for a new jet engine. Make us a proposal on a single-engine fighter that we can get in a hurry. And I mean in a hurry, in production. We'll talk to you. The first generation jet engines were so weak, they needed to be used in pairs. But Kelly had the latest Whittle design jet engine and a lot of determination. Under the tightest security ever seen at Lockheed, the Skunk Works team went to work. The top secret aircraft was trucked out to Murrah, California, now known as Edwards Air Force Base, to begin its final testing phase, away from the prying eyes of Irving. On January 8, 1944, against all odds, and after just 143 days, the P-80 shooting star made its first flight. Within months, it was routinely streaking through the skies of Southern California at nearly 600 miles per hour. But the war was over before the shooting star became operational. Americans took to the streets and celebrated their hard-fought victory over the Japanese and the Germans. This post-war euphoria didn't last long, however. Soviet aggressions signaled the beginning of a new kind of conflict, the Cold War. Well, after World War II, when everybody thought things were going to quiet down, the world never quieted down, and the Soviet Union became, in effect, the major target. International tensions heightened even more when the Soviets exploded their atomic bomb in 1949. Encouraged by the Air Force, Kelly Johnson started experimenting with exotic ramjet propulsion systems. Within a year, the X-7 unmanned research vehicle was reaching speeds approaching Mach 4, an incredible 2,700 miles per hour. The extremely small, thin wings of this craft showed up in the next Skunk Works aircraft, the F-104 Starfighter, whose wings were so sharp, they required a protective cover for handling by ground crews. Dubbed the missile with a man, it was the first aircraft to operate at sustained speeds of Mach 2, or 1,300 miles per hour, and remained in production for nearly 30 years. In between their military successes, the Skunk Works team found time to create an entirely new category of commercial aircraft, the corporate jet. The Lockheed Jet Star soon began flying CEOs and VIPs to destinations around the world in comfort and style. But not all the projects from this era were successful. The radical-looking XFB-1 was the first Skunk Works project commissioned by the Navy. Designed to operate off small ships, it had the ability to take off horizontally and land vertically. However, it was woefully underpowered and dangerous to fly. Pilots complained that while flying vertically, they were pointed at the sky rather than their landing site. Kelly ended up canceling the program and returning the money. By 1954, the United States became increasingly alarmed about the massive buildup of Soviet military aircraft. The CIA was becoming increasingly frustrated. Its usual source 